authority. Because name is another one I looked up. You know, in the beginning. Name was simply describing the person's character, his responsibility, his authority. It's not his title. You know. Jesus' name was Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus is the Christ. Not Jesus Christ. His last name isn't Christ. It's his description. He's the anointed one. Who came here, God gave him the anointing to give you the anointing, give you the anointing, give you the anointing. Give you the, anointing. the same anointing that he had. He freely gives, you know. These signs will follow those who believe in my name, in my character, in my authority. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, he's just saying what will be happening to those who believe in him, those who commit to him, those who submit to him, those who trust in him. Right? Now we have to also understand that uh, when he's talking about trampling on serpents and stuff, he's talking about what we're kind of learning in our Bible study about taking authority and casting out demons and, and you know, on those battlegrounds of our mind, that, uh, you know, learning how to, number one, deal with ourselves and, 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 and get freed ourselves so we can be there for others that need to be taught or need our own. Right? It is a lot easier for us to get deliverance and freedom and, and use that authority in ourselves and as other people. There's a reason for that. Some other people aren't ready for it. Sometimes they're immature about it. They don't know how to deal with it. And they need your help. But that's why you minister to them and you, you teach them. It's the most important thing we do in our ministry is the fact that, you know, it's, you know, we require, like you all know, that we require, like, uh, when somebody seriously wants to get some deliverance and freedom from some things, we, we ask them to fast for three days. That's not an easy thing to do. But it does come point in the halfway through your fast or so, or at some point in your fast, it gets a little bit easier, and then you really start becoming sensitive to the Spirit, and we ask you to write things down, and, and, things, and it makes it easier for things to come to the surface and that you can deal with, and then we can, we can minister. Uh, and then, then a person comes, and we, we minister to them, and they get some deliverance, and they actually go through some action that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, by faith that uh, starts really snowballing a lot of times. I mean, they start by faith by coughing or whatever comes to it. If something's, you know, if they start to cry, if they want to scream, if they want to, what, it doesn't matter. And it seems to, it seems to escalate. And you can tell that somebody's getting freedom when that happens, when they're, you know, we had one woman that just, she just screamed. We're like, oh my gosh, Linda's going to call the police or something, you know, and she lives across the street from us. Uh, uh, but, you know, but she was just, ah, she's just wanting freedom, man. And that's what she did. And so there was always some kind of faith that was being released. And, and man, after it's all said and done and we're settled down, we're all exhausted. And, and they're exhausted, but they're also very light and, and they feel they feel delivered they feel free okay and we're like and they're like this is great i never wanted to end and now we have to minister to them this is the easy part <coughs> because tomorrow you're going to wake up that demon's going to come right back knocking on your door and and checking to see you if you've replaced him with anything you have to walk this out you have to remember what we've talked about. You have to remember what you just got delivered from, and you have to walk that out. Now, how do we do that? We learn. We, we resist the devil. He flees. We don't flee. We, resi we resist. He has to turn and flee. In my name, he says. In my authority, in my character, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. That's our heavenly language. It's a beautiful language. It's where we get filled with wisdom. We've talked about it. Something we all need to continue to practice and mature in. We don't go around handling snakes and serpents and stuff like that. It's dumb. Okay. We don't, go, we don't go looking for them, but you know, there's missionaries can testify in the scripture. They've been out, they've been protected by those those kind of poisonous animals in the Amazon jungle. They've been free, they, they've drank some nasty water and stuff, and they've got sick. There's testimony after testimony after testimony of those things happening. 
That's why I always tell people when you get go, if you go, if you get feel like you want to go on a mission, you need to pray fast and know that God's sending you to do that. Because you could put yourself in a dangerous situation. There's places out there that uh, I know. I've got a, a friend that uh, used to go to um, Haiti, and uh, man, they they uh, man, when they knew these missionaries would come because they go up into the mountains of Haiti and all the wherever they are in the hills, and uh, you know they preach Jesus and they help people. And they they there's nurses that go up there and they go up into the jungles and help the poor. And, and uh, but man, they know you're coming. There's a lot of uh, voodoo and stuff that goes on in those islands and stuff, and they. They send out their witch doctors, and he says, man, one time he, they walked out, and he just started, uh, he actually was going out into the, the jungle a little bit to relieve himself, and he saw this, you know, like, white, he saw this white line, he kept kind of following it, and it was, like, encircling his whole camp. And then all of a sudden, when he got to about, I don't know, a certain point, he saw a man in the church, you know, he saw, and he had paint all over his face and stuff, and he was a witch doctor. He was cursed. And he took it back to his, uh, the guy who was the leader of the missionary, and he says that, he says, man, there's a big white line out there. He goes, oh, they do it every time. They do it every time. That's they're, they're, they're cursing us. But, you know, we, we've also been, we've, we always anointed where they've been for the oil. And we, we, we plead the blood of Jesus. And, you know, we know what the power and the authority we have over what they have. He says, we keep telling man, because he, every time, uh, every time he gets, he, he does this, he gets sick. He gets sick, he gets laid up, and then just about any time he gets uh, going again, he starts feeling better. Another missionary team comes, and he does it again. He gets sick over and over and over. <laughs> Which yeah. yeah, he's getting yeah. sick. Yeah, they warn him, man. If you keep doing it, you're going to die. You know, you, know you, should, you, need to, you need to repent, man. Give your heart to our power. You, you should really want our power because it, look at us and look at you. You know, God protects us. And that. That's what he's talking about right there. Um, Scripture here is Luke 10, verse 19. It says, Behold, Jesus speaking to us, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Um, again, I said that if, in Ephesians, it says that we are, he, he, he has been given all for, he's the head over the church, which is his body, which is the fullness of him for all in all. That ties us together pretty good. So anything that has been given to Jesus has been given to us. And that's basically what I want to talk about the most is, uh, I know what time is a little bit short here, so I can't go through all the day. Um, yeah, we'll stay here until Christmas if we have to. I can't do that. <laughs> So I'm just kind of reminding us that you know that you know we're not just uh, we're not just a, a people that just listen to God, but we need to act and rise up in our authority. So if you if you don't really have a revelation, you need to really start praying to God and asking Him to show you. Go through the scriptures that where Jesus promises us and God promises the very things that he's establishing in us. And, and let's really start getting revelation of the fact that we're more than just a congregation of people who love Jesus. We, we, are, we are being developed and walking in authority and power that most of us don't even come close to tapping into. Yes. My, I'm included. You know. Yes. Uh, we, we get so tied up in who we are as human beings and, and what we do in our everyday lives and our, our habitual ways throughout our day, forgetting that we <coughs> have been called according to His purpose. We are of the call, He says in Romans. The call. Many, many can even, get, even many can even segregate some of that or separate some of that. He says, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. Few. We need. To, I mean, there's God has chosen people to have such sensitive. Ears in their spirit to hear and do what the Word of God has said for us to do. And we can all have that if we really tap into our spirit and start listening. Because our time is short. I really believe the time is short for this dispensation. You know, you hear me talk about dispensations. Uh, some people have called me and I don't care either. I'm a dispensationalist. Uh, whatever. All that means is that you know, those are allotted, administered lots of time that have been, that are, and that will be, you know. 
Paul calls this time from the time that Jesus you know, ascended to the heavens till he comes back from his body, the dispensation of grace. It's God's grace that's withholding his wrath. <coughs> he was a wrathful God before Jesus. I mean, go read the Old Testament. How many times he, I mean, ruthless in disobedience. Was ruthless dealing with disobedience. And he was a wrathful God. He was a loving God, but he was a wrathful God. It's, it's historical. And you know, after this dispensation stops, he's going to be more, he's going to show a wrath that's never been seen by anybody. It's going to get so bad. God's going to pour out his wrath that's never been witnessed by this on this earth. It's, it's going to finalize the whole thing. It's going to, it's going to rid evil forever. It, it, it's going to be done. He ain't going to play no more games. But right now, we're in the dispensation of grace. God's not pouring out his wrath. He's withholding. Because he's set this time aside for the construction, for the edification, for the building of the body of his first begotten. You know, we're all begotten sons and daughters. Jesus is, he was the first. Okay? But he's not the only. Because we're being begotten. There's been many begotten before us, and there'll be many begotten until Jesus comes. But we are all sons and daughters. We are, we are members of the same body with Jesus. As he is, so are we in this world. We're joint heirs with him. You know. So we need to start thinking that way. We need to start walking that way. Um, all, the God, all the promises of God are yes in him and in him, amen. So that, that's key. We've got to make sure that in him and all that is known. I mean, we can't just say we get all the promises of God. It's got to be in him. Because it's in him that they are all yes and amen. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. I'm just throwing a couple that are just off my head about, you know, who we are. Uh, I've been ministering for over a year now. The same, you know, same thing about that. We've got to get out of that mental mentality thinking that we're just, uh, you know, just people that love God. It's more than that. We're people that love God. We're children that we love that love God. But we have been called according to his purpose and his plan. He has, of course, I told you that we are epistles written by his hand. That there's there's been there's a book written with your name in it, your your purpose, your plan, everything about you that's been in the courts of heaven from way before you were even you made it to the womb. You know, <coughs> he's got them open. All we need to do is start praying that God will reveal to us that purpose and that plan, so we can line ourselves up with that very thing. Okay. Um, all right, so. I want to show you some things, in, in Jesus in action here, and um, a couple other things. But let's go to John 14. I think they're going to post it up there. It's John 14, verse 13 and 14. trusts in me, who is committed to me, who is submitted, consecrated, and dedicated to me. And the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father. So, he is seated at the right hand. Okay. Now, we know that he said he would send a helper. And he would help us, he would confirm things, he would line everything up in agreement, he would be there to empower us to activate the anointing that's been invested in us by the blood that cries out for our redemption daily. To do the works that he did. To do even greater than he did. Now he says, and whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Alright. So here's I'm getting to something. 
that really started changing the way I thought. Um, again, the Holy Spirit started talking to me a long time ago about this. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I think that a lot of people do have this revelation, but a lot of people need to hear this revelation. And, you know, sometimes we just need the facts. We, we need to go look and study, like I said, and find out for yourselves. But the thing that jumps out of this page to me is the word ask. You know me by now. I'm always throwing to every, you know, I'm always going to be going after the words that most people don't go after. You know, uh, it's like I told you, like, when we, uh, God desires that we, uh, we, that our soul, that we prosper in all things, that our body be lined up in good health, and that our souls will prosper, as our soul will prosper. And I told you I studied the word as. <laughs> Everybody else will go after prosper. Everybody else will go after, you know, soul or, or body or whatever. And I, I went after that as because it did some connecting there. It says, you know, he, he wants us to prosper in all things, our, that our bodies will be in good health, as our soul prospers. So that as, to me, is a key right there. And tells me that really we should be reading that backwards. So as our soul prospers, our body lines up in good health, and we set ourselves up to prosper in all things. Right? So you know me by now. I, I, I go after that. You know, uh, we're to love God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and and uh, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. As I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm missing something here. I, how can I love my neighbor? Properly, if I'm not loving myself, because it says as kind of connects that dot that we need to love ourselves so we can properly love each other and properly receive what God loves in us. Even if those places we don't, we can't, we have a hard time loving ourselves. I shared with you, man. That's truly if you have a place still in you that you don't love yet you know that God loves you. That's truly using the Lord's name in vain. It's not. It's not verbiage and consonants and vowels that do that. It's using his character that he's imparted in you. We're using his character that he has bestowed in us because he loves us. You know, and we don't love that area. There's parts of our souls I, I, I shared. I, I got that revelation over a year ago. I mean, I said, I have a problem. I'm missing a lot, man, because I don't, there's places in me I don't love. Remember, I had everybody, I asked you guys too. I said, how many people in here love God? How many people in here love themselves? Hmm. I think I had one person, maybe two. I think you were one. I'm like, and then you all were feeling like, oh, maybe I should have put my hand up. <laughs> because we all struggle with areas in our lives. And, you know, but the fact is, is that uh, we need to learn that if God can love every part about us, bad and good, then we need to, you know, search those things out and learn to love them, you know? Uh, we love ourselves so we can properly receive God's love and have a revelation of his love and that we are properly loving our neighbors. Um, so the word ask, I started studying that out and I started here in my Bible and, and uh, one, you know, when I start studying stuff, I, I'm like, well, that's not giving me enough. So I'll go get a dictionary and I'll start studying it, you know, the English dictionary. And then I'm like, okay, what am I doing? Let me go get my Strong's and I'll study out the Greek word. And that'll take me into the Hebrew. The Hebrew will take me back into the Greek. And next thing you know, I've spent an hour on one little three-letter word, ask. I got a, I got a Strong's concordance. I got a Vines. I got a Young's uh, expository dictionary. I mean, you know, I've got plenty of tools. You know, I think that's what it means by... Uh, you know, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, if I, when I go build a pool, I'll tell you what, I can be the best pool guy and best pool builder in the, in the area. Uh, but you know what, I can absolutely do it, nothing without the proper tools. I can, I can just tell you I'm a good pool builder, but I can't prove nothing to you because I don't have the tools. I utilize, I, I take what I know and take what I do and I utilize everything that I can utilize to make that a better job and to get that job complete. It's the same thing with rightly dividing the word truth. You need to take everything that's at your hand, at your disposal, and, and be able to really get in there and understand. And if you if you ask the Holy Spirit to do this, it makes it less like homework and more exciting. Because you always get revelation as you're studying. Don't ever bypass those little words, man, because you can learn a lot. Okay. So I went to the word ask, and... Uh, started studying out all my sources and stuff, and I come up with, a, it came, it, there's three Greek words for that. One is uh, A-E-T-O, 
A-I-T-E-O. And it means it requires, it's to require, okay? Makes sense. To ask is to require. Uh, the second one was erotao, E-R-O-T-A-O, which meant, it means request, it's a request with expectation. You know, I do too, it, it, we all can do it, especially as parents, you know, how many times have you requested something of your child? Meaning, I'm not giving you, I don't want, you know, I'm not giving you a choice. I'm requesting that you go clean your room. It's to your, it's to your uh, uh, benefit if you, you go do that. Because if you don't, <laughs> we'll whoop your butt, right? So it's, it's, a, it's requesting with expectation. Uh, you know, there's a scripture I'm always telling you about in June 20, especially when it comes to uh, praying in in uh, our heavenly languages, because I really believe that Jude is the key to understanding that and, and backs up. Well, it just says that, you know, when we earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints of old, so we need to fight for that kind of faith that says, I'm gonna just I'm just going to do it because it tells me to do it, you know, praying in tongues, I'll say. Uh, but it goes on in Jude 20, it says, you know, uh, you know, build yourself up, which means edify, construct, Build yourself up with your most holy faith, that faith you just fought for. Go ahead and just, just utilize it, right? Uh, build yourself up with your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourself or keep yourself in the love of God by doing that. Keeping yourself in the, the nature of God, because God is love. God is spirit. That, that word love there is agape. It's his nature. So when we pray in tongues, we build ourselves up and we keep ourselves in his nature. Okay? And then it says at the end of it, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. I looked up that word mercy, you know, and uh, it was telling me that I can look with holy expectation, holy confidence for the very favor that the Lord Jesus had. That not only he gives, but what he received from God. We can have it, okay? The third uh, definition was Punthanomaia, P U N T H A N O M A I. You got it again a little slow. Yeah. P U N T H A N O M A I. That's the Greek. It's another Greek word for ask. And this one is the one that's uh, used in. in uh, Jump. And it means to demand. Okay. Again, we are joiners with Jesus. So don't think that's taboo or anything. Okay? I'm going to read to you again. I'm going to read this 13 or 14. Jesus speaking. And whatever you demand in my character and authority, my name. That I will do, that the Father may be glorified. If you demand anything in my name, in my character, in my authority, I will do it. You know, I've heard it here. I've heard it even last time I talked about how we ask, uh, you know, we're, we ask. I think I, we, we ask and just, it's not ignorance, it's not its not anything, it's just our way of doing things. We ask for the Holy Spirit to come, we are singing the Hebrew, the Holy Spirit to come in. And, and I'm doing it too, and I'm getting jacked up in Jesus just like everybody else, man. I'm like, I just, I don't know what to do, should I play more guitar, or just sit here and bask, or what, you know? And, and Holy Spirit come in, but I know that He's in me. You don't have to come and do nothing, man. You just need to rise up. I'd rather just rise up and make me just bubble over, man. Let my cup overrun. Right? I don't have to ask you to come. If anything, I'm going to ask anything is I'm going to ask you to come on, rise up, fill me up, take fill every void in me. You know, I want to run, do circles. I want to get silly for God. I want to just be, be jacked up in Jesus. I, yeah. I had somebody say, you know, well, I quit drinking, I quit dr drugging, I, all that stuff. And I just got saved. They were like, what do you do for fun? And I said, man, I smoke Jesus, I snore Jesus, I shoot Jesus up, man. I, 
Man, I, that is, that's a high you've never experienced, man. I've done it all. I've paid a lot of money and spent a lot of time in my life chasing after that high. And I'm going to tell you what, the day I met Jesus, there was nothing ever that compared to that high. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, I was poor. I know I'm blessed because I didn't, not everybody has that testimony, but I, you know, I hit rock bottom. The Bible says that when you, uh, that God will not despise a broken or contrite heart, a broken heart and contrite spirit. He will not despise. He will not ignore. When you call out to God when you're broken, and that's what I did. I didn't, I didn't know that. But I'm like crying out to, you know, you, this invisible God that I heard about. Boy, if you don't show up right now, it's over for me, man. I'm done. You know, and he made himself real in a moment, man. And I mean, it just transferred everything inside me the way I thought. And I mean, I got, I got, I got drunk in the Holy Ghost. I knew what that was. All I know is what I felt and experienced at that very moment was better than anything I ever shot up, snorted up, smoked up, popped up, sexed up, whatever, you know, all those things I was chasing after to feel, to make myself feel better. We have a right to utilize what God's already given us. He's given us authority. Listen, when we do the great works. I mentioned that, you know, that we'll be, you know, we can do it now. And I think it's going to really uh, uh, just manifest in greatness one day. And all of our responsibility is, is put it in practice and we'll listen to the Holy Spirit and we'll start getting better and bigger and bigger and better at it, right? But the fact is, is that we're to, we're to heal the sick. Jesus says, go heal the sick. Go cleanse the lepers. Yeah. Cleanse them of the diseases. It says, raise the dead. It says, cast out demons. Freely has been given to you. Or free, freely has been given to me. Freely I give it to you. Freely you go get it. Okay? That's the way that worked. He didn't say for us to go ask for it. We're to demand it. Amen. Your prayers. I was listening very carefully. I'm like, yeah. <coughs> it's true. And sometimes we just need to be reminded. We need, we need to start to make what's already God been given to you. His expectations of you. He's already invested in you by his blood. He's invested a, 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 a mighty thing in all of us. And so we demand it. Uh, let's go over to Acts 3. Man, this didn't work out any way I thought it was going to. See, that's what happens when I do that. And, you know, <laughs> so I shouldn't even do this. Most of the time I don't. I come up here and just say, okay. So I'm, I'm jumping all over the place. It's like a, it's a mess. You wouldn't even know. All right, so <clears throat> Acts 3. Starting in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms for those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him, and John and Peter, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, "Look at us." Now, I get that vision. I, they're they're just moseying up the steps, probably in the temple, and they're about to enter into the sanctuary or whatever. And there's this guy, he can't walk, and, and he's just like, you know, asking for some money to help because he can't work, he can't earn, so he has to beg for money to eat and everything else. And, and I, I, he just, boy, they just looked intently on him. They just looked on him, and I guarantee they were, at that point, walking with Jesus, they're, they're so quick to be, everything they do is just like, they, they look intently on him and, and just saying, Holy Spirit, what do we do here? We're saying we should. And ask, you know, as far as asking to supply something like that. <coughs> oh, what do I do? Yeah. Um, you know, we got the, the, the story about Paul and uh, Silas or whoever it was, and they walk into a town, and there's this uh, uh, this, this witch or whatever, a, a false prophetess or whatever, you know, a fortune teller or whatever that uh, speaks for uh, and, and talks and prophesies and tells the fortune or tells the future for the kings and the mayors and all the authorities of that town and, 
And uh, Paul and Silas come in there in the power of the Holy Ghost, and she the devil in her knows the spirit that's in them. Yeah. And just starts harassing them and following them, and, you know, really in mockery, in the spirit of, uh, I, I, I looked up that too, it's, uh, it was a spirit of Python. Yeah. Uh, that she was she was speaking the truth. She's like, oh, look at you who are of the most high God. <coughs> now, one thing there that she said was a lie. But she said it in mockery. She said it in the spirit of Python. And the spirit of Python is where we get the English word Python. It's a, uh, what she was giving us. It, it was the word of truth that was constricted. It has all time. The spirit of Python is very active in the church today. You know, you know, constrict the body of Christ. It'll constrict faith. It'll constrict, you know, the act of faith and belief in what we're supposed to be doing and stuff. So you got to watch that one. But anyway, <laughs> Paul, you know, I don't know why it took him three days to do it. Yeah. You know, that's that's going to be another that'd be another sermon. But uh, the fact is, is that when it was time, he just looked at her and he said, you know, he just looked her right in the eyes intently and just said, in Jesus' name, you come out. She lost all her power immediately. He, he came with such authority and he demanded that. Uh, he didn't ask God, God, will you move this devil out of this woman? She's irritated me. You know, no. He looked at her and said, in the name of Jesus, you come out of her. Immediately <coughs> lost her power, found herself begging for money because she couldn't learn it. Nobody was giving her nothing because they didn't listen to the words she said. I imagine that intent look. It's got to, you know, that's what it is. My, my children say that uh, I have this look. I don't know I have it, but I guess I'm a dad, so I must, you know, but they said, Dad, you got this little guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, fixing his eyes on him when John, Peter said, look at us. So the guy in faith looked at him. He released faith. He gave him his attention, expecting to receive something from them, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He's utilizing exactly what we're talking about. He utilizes what Jesus gave them. Didn't ask Jesus to do anything. Didn't ask God to do anything. Just took authority and did it. Right? In the character of Jesus. In the character of God Almighty. Okay. He demanded. He didn't request. If he was requesting, he was requesting with expectation. Right? The Young's Expository Dictionary says the word ask is a weak English translation of the word demand. Hmm. That's so true. So true. You know, I'm going to go to John 16 here. You know, we have this right here. Verse 23, 24. Jesus saying, and in, in that day, what day? In the scripture before, it was talking about how uh, uh, his, his death and then his resurrection and everything else, you know, he, we will have joy. And nobody will be able to take that joy. We will rejoice. But it says, in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most surely I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. But until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Now what that's saying there, when you study all that out, saying that there's, we, we are to bring our, make our requests be made known to God. Make our supplications and our requests be made known to God. That's a different thing. Okay? But the things that God has already established through Jesus Christ that Jesus has given us, we're not to ask. We're supposed to demand, take authority. Take authority and demand. Uh, one small little testimony, I'll close it out. Um, I learned this a long time ago, but then again, like a lot of times, you just keep forgetting. you got to remind yourself. That's why it's important to continue to feed on the Word of God every day. Um, you know, I've been reading the Bible, I'd say, 99% of every day that I've, since I've been saved for 21 years. I'm reading, I'm reading something. Usually it's right out of the Word. But, uh, you know, it's important because I'm afraid that uh, it'll, it'll, it'll blow away. It'll, you'll forget things, you know. It's a reminder more than anything. 
it freshens me up every day. But anyway, uh, my um, my ex, my wife at the time, uh, uh, she I told you I shared with you guys that she wasn't too enthused about my salvation and all that because I think bottom line is that when when we met each other when we married, um, you know, she, what she was attracted to was the bad boy. It was very calm. Um, my daughter's attracted to the bad boy. She's <laughs> one of her. Her ex-husband and her husband now, they all come from a very similar path that I don't it's kind of funny kind of funny that she is attracted to those kind of men. I was that kind of man. Uh, that's why I told my son it's very important that you know, I told her too, but I told my son it's very important that you treat your daughters <clears throat> the way you want a man to treat her. Because I guarantee if you if you do that, then your daughter's expectations of how a man or how a husband looks is gonna be molded after you. So if you're loving and good and kind, you know, you do everything, you lift her up and, and do everything to cherish your daughter, then her expectations for her husband is going to be no different. Amen. Amen. No different. And so, uh, but anyway, my ex-wife, uh, Debbie, was uh, not too enthused about that, but, you know, she tried. Uh, but she just wasn't willing to, she almost felt like she was a hindrance to me. And so it just kind of, it kind of such. I was, I was trying to be as steady as I could. She kind of went like that. Anyway, but there was a time. Uh, see, God had showed her so much. Uh, what He did through me. She, she, I mean, there was really <coughs> signs and wonders, and just uh, there's a couple of testimonies I could share. I'll just share one of them. One was that we were in our living room, and I don't know. I was probably about five years old in Christ, five or six years old. We were in our living room. It was evening time. And maybe it was late afternoon, and uh, I was I was watching TV or reading something I can't remember, and she was sitting there on the couch, and, and every every three seconds I'd hear her moan, groan, like she was in pain. She'd shift, and, she'd, uh, and I'm like, "What's wrong?" And she's in my back. I'm like, well, go, "Did you take anything?" And she's like, "No." And I'm like, "Well, go take some." And she didn't, and you know, so five seconds later, uh, I'm like. And uh, so on and so forth. That kept happening. I was getting, I was getting frustrated. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's it's it's, it's disrupting my. Th- you know, I mean, you're, it's just agitating. You know, she just kept moaning and groaning. And, you know, and I'm like, I was getting mad. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I got up and started walking to the kitchen to get me something to drink. And uh, as soon as I did, it's like the Holy Spirit just went, get on your belly on the floor. And I'm like, did I just say that? And uh, I'm like, that was weird. And so I get in there and get me some coffee or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, okay, maybe you want to do something. And uh, I said, well, if she's on the floor on her belly, then I'll know this is you, God. I'll, I'll just go from there. I didn't know what I was going to do. And so I'm like, well, surely she's not going to be on the floor. <coughs> <You know? laughs> so anyway, I come walking out there. And sure enough, she was laying on the floor on her belly. And I'm like, okay. And then the next thing the Holy Spirit says, I want you to put your Bible on the lower back. Okay, that's weird. So I walk in, the other room, get my Bible. It's this Bible right here. And I remember just, I just opened it up and laid it right on my back. Now, that's a, that's a study Bible, so even when it's open, it's pretty thick. Okay? Even if it's halfway, and it's still pretty thick. So I'm thinking, okay. So I got this Bible laying on her lower back. And I'm like, okay, what now? And it was praying time. I'm like, ooh, well, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, she already doesn't like me. And, and it's almost like the Holy Spirit's like, okay, so what do you got to lose? <laughs> so I begin to pray in tongues. And <clears throat> I remember uh, I had my left hand up in the air, and I'm standing <coughs> straddled over her like this. And I had my right hand this far, right there. Right over the Bible. And I just start praying, Yama Dabba Dude, Holy Ghost. Right? And the next thing, at the time, I don't know, did that for maybe 30 seconds, 20 seconds, I don't know. And then in the name of Jesus, I command this pain to go. I didn't ask God nothing. I didn't ask Jesus nothing. I just got in the character. I was obedient to what I was being led by my helper. And I demanded that pain to be gone. Immediately, she says, why is your hand so hot? 
I go, well, look up, look at me. And she turned around, looked up, and my hand was that far. My hand was, that's happened to me a couple of times. And I told you one time it was hot and it started perspiring oil. And I had this, I was at a Bible study with about 30 or 40 people, and I'm like, and they're like, what's wrong? I'm like, look, I'll brush it away. It would go away, and then it would bubble up like beads of water on a freshly waxed car. And they're all, and people were like, oh. and then this lady kind of buttered up and got in between everybody else and took my hand and went, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what do you want me to pray? She just says, I don't know, just pray for me. There's something going on here. <laughs> so <clears throat> my ex-wife was like, why is your hand hot? I'm like, well, your hand is hot. And I'm like, and she looked up, she goes, your hand's not touch me. I'm like, my hand is two feet off of you, and you got a two-inch thick Bible on your back. I said, I believe God just got rid of your pain. Stand up. She stood up, and she's like, she stood up, number one, and got right up. And I'm like, move around like you, you know, do the things you couldn't do two minutes ago. And she did, and she's like, and she almost looked like bummed out because it happened, you know. And she's like, <laughs> walking back to her chair and she probably sits down and I go sit down and I pick up whatever I was reading go right back to it, like nothing ever happened and I just kind of put the newspaper or magazine or whatever I kind of looked at her and she's like I'm like and she's like I can't deny it it feels good all that the point is is that you know if we get ourselves in the character we know who we are in the character of Christ we start walking out that authority and we start demanding the things. Go learn. Go do it for yourself. Learn the promises of God, which are yes in Him and amen. Understand what Christ has given us. He's given us the anointing to do these things because we're to carry on the work of His, his life. <coughs> the work of His death. The work of His resurrection. The work of His power. I have a song that I sing. It's, it's called, uh, uh, you know, The Resurrection Power. I, I want, you know... We want that power that's invested in us to rise up and just operate in its fullness. So I, I just I just I challenge you. I challenge you to just start finding out what it is that God Jesus left for us and then start praying and start understanding that and knowing that He's given you something already you don't have to ask to you you don't have to ask for it. You utilize it and you direct it and you do it with authority. Because you have the authority to, to trample over all the servants. And all the wiles of the devil. And let's remember this too. That Jesus bore every grief, every sorrow, every sickness and every disease, every transgression and every iniquity so we wouldn't have to. Now if we really believe that, in the character of Christ, the grief, sorrow, sickness, disease, transgressions, iniquities, which is just the sin nature of mankind, has nothing on us. Even when we face those challenges, even when we, we face death, Jesus, when he was facing death, still knew. Death has nothing on us. Death has nothing. In authority. So Father, in that, in Jesus' name, we just I just pray for a hunger and a thirst and a passion and a drive for everyone in this room to really yes. passionately research who they are in Christ. Yes. That they would research the very things that you left us in your mantle that we wear. That we would be prepared to do the greater works knowing who we are in Christ Jesus as kings and lords and priests. All for your purpose and your plan. I pray, Father God, that there would be a passionate drive by the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us to search it out. We come together tonight to share in communion and the breaking of the bread and the drinking from the cup of promise, Father God. Releasing our faith. Releasing our faith in the very fact That we remind ourselves that you bore these very things. And that you have placed your mantle upon us. That you have given us a signet ring. 
Because we are, we are heirs to the throne. We are joint heirs with Jesus. So we have received what has been already given to him. And we ask for the revelation of this knowledge, Father. In the name of Jesus. And as we eat the bread and drink <coughs> from the cup, Father God, that we place our remembrance of that mantle, of that signet ring. And we're greatly appreciative of it. We humble ourselves as we come before you, Father God, in Jesus' name. We're not worthy, but you've made us worthy. And we thank you, Father God, that it is by your anointing that's been invested in us by the blood of your son, Jesus, that we are compelled to do so. So we put ourselves in remembrance. We place joy in our hearts, Father God, knowing that you have given us this great, this great responsibility. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come as you are. Okay.